Welcome back to the breakfast show too. I'm here with a familiar face, Derek Hodges of Anchor Point Wealth Management. We're going to talk a little bit about the bank failures and what you can do to protect your money. Good morning, Derek. Thanks for joining us. And so we've all heard over the past few weeks about banking failures. Well, in layman's terms, what does that really mean? Yeah, you know, uh, that's uh, Silicon Valley Bank mm -hmm. is the one that first got our attention. And, you know, bottom line is they were an unusual bank. They were not your typical Main Street bank that you probably see in your own community. They loaned a lot of money uh, and, and did a lot of deposit activity with technology companies. Mm -hmm. And they got overextended in that sector. And then when that, that industry started to struggle, they wanted their deposits back. Mm -hmm. And Silicon Valley Bank didn't manage the risk of their portfolio well, and there kind of became a run on the bank. And mm -hmm. then once people start getting fearful, you know, it, banks are one of those things where nobody wants a bank that's sort of okay. They want a bank they feel rock solid in. Right. Once that fear starts to spread that the bank may not be solid, everyone wants their money. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you get that phrase, run on the bank. Mm -hmm. And so then I would imagine people are concerned. What are you hearing and what are you advising them to do? We don't think it's a widespread issue. We do think there's a number of banks who are stressed right now, but here's kind of what we think. The big banks have been really tightly regulated and examined since the great financial crisis back in 2008. Mm -hmm. We think those banks are very well capitalized and very safe. We think probably the wide swath of the community banks in all of our communities across the country are probably really safe. And probably even most of the regional banks are. But what we do think is that there may have been a gap in some of the examinations of some banks, and we're probably seeing the effects of that. But we don't think it's a widespread issue. And if you have under $250,000 in the bank, you are FDIC protected. Mm -hmm. And if you have more than that, I would say go to the FDIC website, run their calculator on insurance, and the way you register or own those accounts can provide you extra coverage or different mm -hmm. limits. And then even in those cases where you don't have enough limits, you could possibly go to your bank and ask them to give you what we'd call excess protection, mm -hmm. and they'll oftentimes do that. Mm -hmm. And so then, is this an issue that we could should be concerned about here in the heartland? I don't think so. As best we can tell, the community banks, which is a, you know widely represented in this area, are very strong. And what I would recommend is go talk to your bank if you have a concern. I assure you they'll uh, be very transparent and show you the information that they have. But no, I don't think there's a widespread issue that we ought to be concerned with. Mm -hmm. And you know, people want to trust their bank. So what is the best way to really be safe with your money? Well, I think it's number one, start with what do you need the money for? So if you need money that's long term, you probably want to be in the stock market or investment markets. If you need it short term, it probably does need to be at the bank or something like that and pay very close attention to those FDIC limits. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that so many of the depositors at that Silicon Valley Bank were unprotected. We regularly get questions with our clients when they go to their banks. They ask all the time about FDIC. So I think it's kind of an interesting issue that yeah. they were unprotected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, today the Federal Reserve is set to announce whether or not they're going to raise interest rates again. Where do you see this going? Yeah, this is, uh, they're walking a tightrope. It's a very big deal. Uh, they really do want to slow this economy down, but now they don't want to cause more stress in the financial system. We watch the futures market to kind of get an indication uh, what the, the, the futures market thinks is going to happen. And right now they feel the futures are saying a 25 basis point increase is highly likely. Mm -hmm. There's still a few outside bets that say that they won't do any increases. The reason I'd say the chance of them not doing anything is pretty low. I think if they don't raise the interest rate, it sends a signal that maybe the banking system is really stressed yeah. and they don't want to send that message and because I don't think it's true and they don't want to even try to get any more uh, fuel to that fire. And that kind of goes into my next question. How does that kind of tie into the banking failures? Yeah, so the, the stress on the banking system has been they started getting higher payouts on treasury bonds. So like Silicon Valley Bank, they were buying treasury bonds and locking their money up for a while and then their consumers wanted their deposits back. Well, when interest rates started to increase, the value of their bonds decreased in value. So the actual portfolio of investments the bank had started falling much lower than the deposits that they owed back. So this 
real accelerated high interest rate movement the Federal Reserve's done has really put a stress on the bank system. Yeah, I could imagine. Well, Derek, that is all such great information. We hope that maybe it's eased your mind a little bit at home. We appreciate you coming in to talk about that. I know that's been on a lot of people's mind. We'll be back in just a few minutes.